Chapter 1.1 Types of Movement at Joints In this video, we will look at the different types of movement that can occur at a joint. So, there are a range of different movements that can take place at a joint. And these movements that can occur all depend on the type of joint itself. So some joints allow a lot more movement than others. The types of movement that we need to be aware of are as follows. Flexion, extension, rotation, abduction, adduction and circumduction. So if we take a look at flexion, the definition for flexion is the decrease in the angle at a joint. So if we look at the elbow, um, flexion occurs at the elbow when the arm itself bends. So an example of this would be um, if we were doing a bicep curl using some free weights, this would be the upward phase of the bicep curl. So the bicep curl would see the weight uh, coming upwards towards the shoulder. So the angle at the elbow is getting smaller. Uh, the equivalent at the knee would be when we're preparing to kick uh, a football. So our leg would be bending at the knee in order to generate that power. At the shoulder, uh, flexion would be um, seen when preparing uh, to perform a dive in swimming. So that would see our arms swing forwards and upwards so that our hands were above our head. At the hip, an example of um, a flexion would be when we're performing a squat because that would see our thigh um, coming up towards our chest. So the angle at our hip between our thigh um, and our, our midsection is getting smaller. Moving on to extension, and the definition of extension is the increase in the angle at a joint. And this is completely opposite to flexion. So if we go back to our, our bicep curl, so extension in the elbow would see the arm being straightened. So in the bicep curl, this would be when we were lowering the weights, so that arm becomes straight again. At the knee, if we use the example of kicking the ball again, this would be... Um, when we're actually executing the shot itself. So this would see the leg straighten and the foot go towards the football. At the shoulder, extension um, would be, would see our arms come downwards and swing behind our body. So the good example of this would be um, when we're using our arms in skiing. So when we're putting our poles in the snow and we're pulling ourselves forwards. At the hip, uh, a good example of extension of the hip is the actual preparation phase of kicking a football. So this would be when our thigh swings backwards, um, you're increasing the angle between the midsection and the thigh. Rotation then. Um, this can occur at the shoulder and the hip. Uh, and this basically is when a bone turns about its longitudinal axis within the joint. So it's quite a complicated definition, but it's almost like a twist in action in that particular limb. Um, so an example of uh, rotation uh, at the shoulder would be when we are performing a topspin uh, forehand drive in tennis. So we're getting that twist in our arm to allow the racket to get that topspin on the ball um, through what we call lateral and medial rotation. So medial rotation is when the, the limb is twisting inwards towards the body and lateral rotation is when the limbs are twisting outwards uh, away from the body. So when we're performing that top, um, top spin drive in tennis, that would see us using medial rotation because the arms are twisting inwards towards the body. Um, in terms of rotation at the hip, this would be um, seen when we're performing a full twist on a trampoline. So we're getting that twist off our foot, allowing the upper body to spin round and complete that full twist. Abduction is similar to well, similar to the phrase uh, to abduct someone. If you to abduct someone, you, you take them away. So abduction is the movement away from the middle or middle line of the body. So if you imagine, if you look at that diagram, imagine that the uh, the man himself's got a line dotted along the middle of his body. This would be when our limbs are moving away from that particular midline. So a good example 
of uh, abduction is when we're doing the, the outward phase of a star jump. So when our arms are moving away from the midline and going upwards, and when our legs are moving away from the midline and going outwards, that is a really good example of abduction. We then have adduction, which is the complete opposite to abduction. So if abduction was taken away from the midline, adduction is movement towards the middle or the midline of the body. So again, the example of the star jump, this would be when uh, the lowering phase or the inward phase of the, the star jump. So the arms have come from an out reach position and they're moving towards the body and the legs are also moving towards the body, moving together. And finally, we have circumduction. So this is probably a, a, a term that you've not heard of before. And circumduction is the continuous circular motion of a limb around a joint. So it's important you don't get this one confused with rotation. Okay. And um, basically, circumduction. A good example of this at the shoulder would be um, the arm action during front crawl. So we've got our arms moving round and forwards and upwards to bring that hands forwards so that we can then pull and then complete this continuous circular motion of our hands. Um, an example at the hip would be if we can imagine a gymnast on a beam, so when they're on that beam they've got one foot in front of the other. Um, an example of circumduction would be when they bring or swing that back foot around and then place it in front of them on the beam. In terms of movement at joints, uh, it's important to be aware of, of what particular joint allows which particular movement. Okay, So hinge joints allow only flexion and extension. So hinge joints can only move in that one plane that we've talked about pre in the previous video. Um, so typically they allow the limb to bend and then straighten. Okay, But if we can think of it as flexion and extension. Ball and socket joints, these are the obviously the hip and the shoulder, they allow a full range of movement. So they allow flexion, extension, rotation, abduction, adduction and circumduction. So just to recap, the elbow and the knee allow flexion and extension. The hip and the shoulder allow flexion, extension, rotation, abduction, adduction and circumduction. And so that is everything covered in the type of movement at joints. So you now know the six different types of movement that can occur at joint and you now know the actual movements that occur at each particular joint. So what you need to do now is complete um, your homework sheet and make sure that you fully understand all of this uh, for your next lesson.